And we're live. We are indeed live. Saints fans, welcome back to another episode of Saints TV Live. I hope you are well on this Tuesday evening. Unfortunate loss to Hawthorne on Saturday afternoon, but we move. Max, how are you doing? Yep, yeah, uh, just as you said, Saturday was a little bit forgettable. Um, but yeah, besides that, doing all right, getting over getting over a cold I've had all week. So um, yeah, that's all That's all better now. How about yourself, Jordan? Uh, doing all right. Um, I'm sure you know how it is with exam season and, and the like. So, you know, a bit, bit under the pump at the moment, but we'll, we'll get through it and we'll manage. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks for joining the stream tonight, guys. If you haven't already, check out Saints TV Weekly, Jake's Jake's uh, weekly weekly video on Monday, and the Saints TV podcast. And I believe there's a bit of news coming up about a special guest. Yes, so I don't know if everyone's seen the uh, little teasers Jake's been putting in. Um, I think it was potty two weeks ago, and then he's he's dropped some more stuff uh, yesterday. Uh, a special guest announcement for the podcast, 7 p.m., and then the potty to go live on Thursday night, I believe it's 7 p.m. as well. But that's a bit of a TBC, but definitely Thursday night. Um, yeah, have uh, Sainers who, who are in the stream right now, give a give a guess to who you think it is, and it'll be pretty funny to see if we get it. Um, I think there were a few names already drawn that that of uh, potential candidates that it could be. Um, but yeah, should be should be a lot of fun. Will be a great listen. Um, excited to see what Jakey. Um, who, who, sorry, who Jakey announces tomorrow night. Yep, and don't bother asking us because we don't know. We're just as, you know, we're just as out of, out of the loop as you guys are. So, yeah, I hope it's, hope it's someone like Nick Rewalt. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I believe the other candidates were like Ross Lyon, uh, was it Lenny Hayes, Robert Harvey, Sam Samuel L. Jackson, I believe, was thrown in there as well. Eric uh, I can't, rem- can't remember if Molly Meldrum was on the list. Well, that was just a comment somewhere I read, but yeah, pretty pretty big names, and yeah, looking forward to seeing who who Jake announces tomorrow. Yes, it uh, yeah, it'll be quite interesting, and I'm quite excited for that. Um, before we announce, oh, I guess I, I guess special guest has already announced Jordan. We might get into a little bit, a very short review of the uh, of the Hawks game. Um, might just you know start to your general thoughts on the game. How what, what were you thinking come Saturday, Jordan? Uh, I was I was I was confident in the win, but if you watched last Tuesday, you'd know that I didn't think it was going to be a blowout. I thought that we, you know, it would be a close game. We'd take our foot off the gas, and clearly I was right in in both those respects that it was a close game, and we definitely took our foot off the pedal. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win. Um, I felt our tackling was a bit poorer than usual. Max, what were your what were your thoughts? Where did we lack in key areas? Yeah, look, I was quite the opposite. I thought we'd come out there and give Hawthorne a spanking, but clearly, clearly didn't do that. They they should have given one to us. Oh, there's there were so many things that I think we needed to nitpick, and I think that's the good thing. At least this has happened before the buy. Last year it happened after the buy, so there's there is two weeks now where we can prove it. We go back to the desk and the drawing board and see what happens. For me, the biggest one was hard ball gets. No one wanted to put their head over head over the footy. Um, and Jordan, as you've said previously, no one wanted to put their bowl uh, head over a bowl of soup. So it was, um, yeah, it was quite it was quite disgraceful. I've got up the disposal in front of me. There was one, two, three, four, five, six Hawthorne players that were top six in disposals. Um, the only ones that. Two, sorry, they were Sicily, Newcomb, Moore, Day, Nash, and Impey. They all had more disposals than Crouch and Naz, who were seventh and eighth respectively. But look, you're not going to win too many games of footy when uh when you're not getting the ball. So I think that was that was our biggest worry coming out of Saturday. Yep, and I think another big worry that that's sort of flying under the radar that I've been tickled by in the last couple of weeks is there were a lot of fans that were. They were they were pretty pissed off, excuse my language, pretty pissed off at the performance on Saturday. And you're right, we that was that was a shambolic performance on Saturday. But what got me the most were the amount of people who. What was the Max? Were you at the game on Saturday? No, I wasn't. I was working, unfortunately. Okay, well you're you're at most games, so I'll give you a pass. But the attendance was was quite shocking, and I'm really it's really starting to get to me. 
the amount of Saints fans that that bitch and moan in the in the comments saying, "Oh, why do we bother turning up?" Well, you don't. The crowd was abominable. It was a Saints home game, one forty-five on a Saturday. You had no excuse if you're not a nineteen-year-old at work at currently at uni, you know, looking for part-time work. You have to be there. I'm, I, it's really, really getting to me. People say, "Oh, you know, we they're, they're not giving us the performances, you know, in deserve to turn up." You turn up no matter the performances. You turn up week in, week out. And pe- what people don't realise that the, is that the crowd plays such a big part of the game. The reason why Collingwood are able to come back the way they are and build momentum is genuinely because of the fans. They have some of the rowdiest fans in the league and they show up rain, hail or rain, hail or shine week in, week out. And I'd really, and you're like, I'm not sure why you're laughing, but I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious when I say this, they play the way that they're able to come back in games because they're fans. It's because they show up and they make noise. We don't show up. And if we bother to show up, we are so damn quiet. It is we. I cannot believe that I'm saying we need to be more like Collingwood. But in terms of their supporter base, maybe keep you know a few more teeth in your mouths. But show up to the, the damn game. games, please, please show up and please make noise. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> that was like that was like Jordan's minute. <laughs> That was uh, maybe a bit more than a minute, but yeah, it's it's you can clearly see that it's you know the the amount of people that just just bitch and moan and don't actually go to the games is, is ridiculous. No, I completely understand, and and Johnny's just said that you boys don't sugarcoat things, and nor nor should we um do anything, or nor should we sugarcoat things, right? Uh, you even though we we lost on Saturday, the club's seven and four, we're in finals contention, we're right now comfortably in the top eight, um. Yeah, I, I think that it's – you're right, Jordan. It's It's been pretty poor, especially over the last two, three years when we had a little bit more momentum. There's a little bit more buzz around Saints footy. And to only get, I don't know, what was it, 13? Well, I'm, I'm completely making up numbers here, but what was it? it wasn't, I would have been yeah. shocked if it was anything more than 15,000 people there on Saturday. At 1.45, it's not like it was raining. <laughs> Perfect weather under the roof at Marvel. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's it, Saints fans do need to get down to, to Marvel as much as we can. Um, it's not that hard, especially if you're on the Sandy and Frankston lines. Um, pretty much the train will take you right there. And I don't know if you live on the other side of the city and you're a Saints fan, then it's even easier. But there is someone, Jordan, that has uh, has joined that knows something a little bit, uh, or knows a little bit about the Marvel turf. Do you, uh, do you want to give a bit of an introduction, I guess? Well, uh, yeah, so Troy Schwartz, uh, some would call him a St Kilda legend. Um, 71 games played, was the youngest player on an AFL list, aged just 17, coming through the 1998 draft. Played in the Wizard in the winning Wizard Cup of 2004, and obviously what we all know him for in round six of 2004, kicked the winning goal against the Lions. If you haven't seen the goal yet for whatever reason we'll show a clip of it now Still gives me chills watching that over and over again, Jordan. How about yourself? Yeah, no, pretty, pretty amazing moment, you know, even if we're only in nappies during when the game <laughs> happened. And look at that. Look how many fans were at the game. It's it's unbelievable then. But welcome. Welcome to our special guest tonight, Troy. How are Thanks, you, mate? Boys. Yeah, no, going well. Just uh, just down here in sleepy Sorrento. And, um, yeah, it's nice and quiet down here in nearly winter. So the, the people... Uh, People hibernate down here in winter and then 
disappear up north or go to warmer climates, but um, it's the best time of year down here. Awesome. Um, we're going to get this this kicked off, Troy, with um, with what what's been going on post footy life, I guess. Um, what have you been up to since since leaving leaving the AFL? Oh, a little bit. Um, it's been a long time. I think seventeen years or something since I I played in the AFL. So it's a long time. Um, I played uh, ten years at Sorrento Football Club, um, and and had you know quite a bit of success there. I coached there as well. So. Coached and played for that time, um, and we won six grand finals in ten years. And we played in eight grand finals, Oof. so the record was pretty good. Um, and I, I, I recruited a couple of former Saints down with me to Sorrento for a couple of years. Um, took my brother who was on a rookie list, so Ben came with me. Um, Caden Beatham came with me for a couple of years. So there's a bit of a blast from the past. Um, and Cato was um, Cato was a bit of a freak. He, he was um, he was a good player when he was eighteen, but um, just didn't quite have the engine, probably all the all the attitude required to play AFL footy at the time. Um, but yeah, certainly at Sorrento on smaller grounds, he um, he played really well. Um, what else have I done? I've done a bit. I've had a few children, a couple of divorces, um, yeah, just for a bit of fun. Um, I've had a restaurant. I've run a gardening business. I've done real estate. Uh, I've sold beef. Um, I've, I've done a few things and I've settled on membership at Portsy Golf Club is my most recent job. Um, so hopefully hopefully that's a job that's a, a longer term job than the other ones. I seem to have been in and out. And I, was, I was a full-time dad for a couple of years, got twin boys and um, sort of raised them for the first few years of their life. So um, then that was that was probably the hardest job I ever had. But um, yeah, so that's a bit of a snapshot into me since I, since I got the, um, the lemon and sass from the Saints. Yeah, nice. It looks like you've been up to to plenty of activities. I'm sure that you know a lot of a lot of a lot of our viewers, um, you know, that have kids of their own can relate to the the being a full time dad part at least. Um, our Saints obviously haven't, but they've been doing all right. Probably haven't been as good as Sorrento over the time that you, that you were playing there. And what was it, six six grand finals that you won? Yeah, yeah, yeah. huge. Um, yeah, but have you been? Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go on. No, no. I, I look, you know, it was um phenomenal run. I, I think the Saints, are, it, it looks as though they've got things tracking in the right direction. I, I think on the weekend was a, you know, a blip, really, when you look at where we've come from. I, I think you, it's hard to be up every single week. And um, I think a couple of players out in the weekend probably hurt. And, you know, Mitch Owens, it's probably underrated the, the loss that he was um, on the weekend for the team because he's... Uh, He's a shining light, that boy. He can um, he can seriously play, and um, I'd be shocked if he doesn't play with a bit of luck on his side. Yeah, he, he's a two hundred game plus player from from what it looks like. So um, yeah, I mean, look, I think the Saints and the Saints have got the right people running the club now. So it's it's been through a few people who probably couldn't lead that well, um, and and now it seems that we've circled back on Ross, and and Ross will be. Um, I'd imagine that Ross is doing his homework pretty thoroughly on the list. And if you're not playing seniors right now, um, you'd sort of be working out where you fit. And he's pretty ruthless, Ross. So you get to the end of the year, and if you're not part of his plans, I'd say we'll be pretty active in the trade period. Um, and there's probably some names of blokes who, who haven't had a game yet this year who who have been probably pretty good servants for the club. Um, and, and they'll be uh, – you would think that um, – if you haven't played an AFL game by this stage with the young blokes who've been playing, that if you haven't had a game yet, you're in a bit of trouble. Yeah, just uh, just on that, you said um, there's been a bit of a transition over the last few years of Saints footy. What do you think's a bit different about this transition from Rats to Lion as opposed to, to transitions gone past and the coaching staff? Uh, look, I think that the, the one thing we've got in, we've got someone that we know can coach and um, he's a proven coach and... And he's a proven leader, and, and we needed that. And and without any disrespect, I don't really know Brett Ratton, and I just I just watch from home, and you watch from afar, and you know you, you can sort of see that our performances under him were a little bit inconsistent. Yeah, we played finals once, but um, yeah, ultimately dropped away, and and we we're up and down. And now it seems that the good teams in the AFL are pretty consistent. Um, you know what you're going to get from a few teams, and you probably still don't quite know what you're going to get from us, but. We're on that path, I guess, to 
to try and emulate these clubs that just give the same level of effort each week. And, um, you, you know, you look at Collingwood and, yeah, even, you know, Geelong have been unbelievable for a long time, but Sydney seemed to give a pretty level, of, you know, a level of effort each week that you just know what you're going to get. Um, and, and we need to get to that point. I don't think we're quite there, but we're, we're probably not that far off, I think. Yeah, I tend to agree. You, you look now in the last sort of two years, we've started off pretty hot. Now it's just about getting that second half of the season right and then that sort of builds consistency hopefully up until finals and then it's consistency in finals. So hopefully we're, we're now on, a, on the right track to doing that. Well, certainly if we can play a final this year, I think it'll be a huge result. And um, mm. probably no one expected us to do that at the start of the year. Um, if we can play a final, if we can play two, well, who knows? I mean, it's... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying we're as good as a top couple of teams, but I, I think that the AFL landscape, you only have to be off by a couple of percent and you can get smacked. So it's, um, yeah, you've just got to be on your game. So that's um, that's that's where it's at. Um, and it's up to the boys now to, to work out that the second half of the year. I remember when I was playing and, yeah, we always used to say the second half of the year got harder. And, um, yeah, your body gets sore, it gets colder. Uh, yeah, you, you, know, you get some injuries. You, you, it's it's harder, and you've got to get better. And if we don't get better from this point on, well, then we won't play finals. We won't deserve to. Um, if we can improve and get better, and yeah, you know, Max King's played two games, um, and there's there's plenty of upside in him. There's upside in plenty of our young guys that, that look like you know, they're you know, some serious players coming through, which is um, which is fantastic. Now our forward line's young. So, mm. you know, I'd rather have our forward line and have a couple of forward lines getting around that have got some older players. Our, our forward line's young and energetic and young players can do anything in big games because no one really knows where their ceiling is. So, I don't think I'd want to get the Saints late in the year if, um, if it was a final and, yeah, I'm not sure you'd want to play the Saints. <laughs> yeah, Troy, you mentioned, you know, there's a few exciting young players. Is there any young player that you've – or who's your favourite young player to watch um, on our team at the moment? Oh, Mitch Owens, I, I just just can't believe the way he goes about it. For a guy that's played a handful of games, it's um, it's pretty impressive. He's a he's a big unit too. He he looks like he's only going to get bigger and stronger over time. Um, Caminiti just, I don't know how they plucked him, and he's a he's another. You know, you watch him in a game. I've been to a couple of games earlier this year, and he, just the size of him, like he he's only going to get bigger and stronger. And um, yeah, they just compete these kids and um. Yeah, you know, Philippu looks as though he's, yeah, he's uh, he's he's a player of two hundred plus games. You would imagine. So the fact that we're getting these games into these kids and they're playing key position roles for us is, um, yeah, it's really important for us long term. So yeah, I'm I'm excited by by what they're doing in the front half, and um, yeah, it's it's up to everything else to gel. Yeah, it's quite exciting that some of the young kids we've got we've had. I don't know, 10 years of probably missed draft picks or missed opportunities in the draft. And I think the last, yeah, two, three years, we've got it right. Machito Owens, Caminiti, um, undrafted, obviously, was uh, Philippu, Windhager. Look, Ronnie Burns looks like he can play now. Um, yeah, it looks like we've got a few under under our belt that we'll, we'll sort of take along with the, uh, the senior boys right now. Yeah, and it looks as though there's some senior blokes who probably thought they were senior players that aren't getting a go. Mm. And um, and that's that's a positive thing. I mean, if we were if we we're going with the tried and tested each week and we were we weren't improving, um, there's plenty of upside in these young guys. So they're they're clearly going to stick with them and um and, and just keep going and, and keep getting games into them. And I'd say we'll be pretty active in the trade table. I, I can't imagine that Stephen Silvani is going to sit back quietly and not do much at the end of the year. And um then we, and we'd have to have some money sitting there to spend on a couple of big fish. And we, and we need to become a club that. You look at other clubs and they're, they're destination clubs and they top up with really good players and, and we need to become that. And it's um, it, it's all there for us at the moment. We, you know, it's a huge club. It's in Bayside. It's got some heavy hitters on the board. It's got a heavy hitter as a president. And we need to start tapping into that and we need to go out and get a big fish. And other clubs do it and we, we don't seem to be able to do it. But, but we've been in the draft. I think you can look and see that the club's in, in pretty good shape. We've got a good coaching group. Um, yeah, everything seems to be humming along. So if, if we can land a big fish and shock some people and drag someone out of a club that no one thought and get someone to say they want to come to the Saints, mm. yeah, it'd be nice, be nice as a past player to see a, a really good player 
say, I want to go and play at St Kilda. And um, that's that's where we need to get to because if we don't get there, it's going to be really hard to climb the ladder um, unless we can start getting a couple of these big free agents and, and throwing money at them, but actually then getting results out of them as well. Yep. Um, that's a good point you make, Troy, about getting a big fish. Um, I think, you know, I probably need a make finals potentially once or once or twice before, you know, it's really winning attracts attracts players. So probably, you know, as soon as we start winning more, um, be a bit more consistent, then I guess um the big fish may come, like you mentioned, you know, Bayside's an attractive place to live at the moment. Um stepping away from the the Saints for a moment, how did you personally get introduced to footy? Um I was an eight year old boy with a with a dad that loved football and a family that were all pretty football mad and um, I was one of three boys and we I was the oldest one. Um, but we always used to be playing games and mucking around and footy was always there. Um, family supported for Geelong, half with Geelong and half with Melbourne. And, yeah, Saturday afternoons I remember watching games at Waverley um, growing up. And then, yeah, as an eight-year-old going down to a local club and trying out for a game of footy in the under-nines and, Play my first game and then sort of going from there. But um, yeah, footy was uh, footy was always fun, um, and I, I wish it probably had have stayed fun throughout my whole time. And um, it probably went away from being fun when I when I actually got to the AFL level because it was it was difficult for me. I wasn't that I wasn't that good and I wasn't that gifted really compared to a couple of blokes got drafted with, and I probably didn't have the the same desire that you know a bloke like Lenny Hayes had or Stephen Baker and. You know, I struggled to get to their level um, and they set the tone with effort and, and how they went about it. And um, and I probably struggled keeping up with those sort of guys. So I, I wish I'd have enjoyed it more. And you, you watch guys now and they seem to be enjoying football a lot more. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, that, that's just how it was. But, yeah, when I was young, yeah, footy was fun and that's that's why I did it. Awesome stuff. Um, when you walked into the club at 17, was there – were you a bit starstruck by some of the players that you were surrounded by, or was it? Did someone take you under their wing straight away? Was there? What was it sort of like walking into the club, seventeen, and you'd freshly been drafted? Yeah, well, I was actually sixteen, so um, oh, I'd, I'd only I'd only just finished year eleven, or well, I hadn't finished year eleven actually. It was, I think it was November, and I was still at school, so I turned up my first day in school uniform, and <laughs> um, and it, I do you think I didn't cop some stick for that? Um, <laughs> So they, they certainly knew who I was straight away because I was the kid that turned up in the school uniform. Um, and I went to St. Bede's, which wasn't far down the road from Moorabbin, grew up in Dingley, which is 10, 15 minutes from the club. So from that point of view, it was handy. But, um, yeah, I was starstruck. I mean, it was it was insane to think that one minute I was playing school footy and I played eight games for the store Pran Dragons they were back then. I, I played eight games for them and, and got invited to a draft camp and got drafted and Next minute, I'm training next to Robert Harvey, Stewie Lowe, Nathan Burke, Spider Everett, Barry Hall. And I'm looking at these guys just going, oh, my, this is unbelievable. Um, and, and unfortunately, yeah, our first year, we started all right. 99, we, we started okay. And then we had that famous game at Hawthorne where um, we're up by heaps at half time. And um, the rumour goes that the coaches were laughing in the coaches box and Tony Brown had had 20 odd touches to half time and ended the game on the bench and... Hawthorne came back from one of the biggest margins ever and beat us. Um, and that was in my first year. And then and then from there, it uh, certainly went downhill a little bit for that season. Um, and then the next couple of years after that, they were pretty lean. Um, winning was hard. And um, and it was, yeah, we, we, were, we were getting flogged at the training track and we weren't giving effort on the ground. And we were, we were being taught how to give effort at training. And there was a lot of one-on-ones, there's a lot of torture training and there was a lot of, well, if you're not going to give effort on the field, you're going to give it at training. And, yeah, we had, we had a couple of brutal sessions where, you know, blokes were, blokes were made to work and, and earn their keep if they weren't going to earn it on a Saturday afternoon playing, that's for sure. Yeah, nice. Sounds like you got a, you know, you've given us a good insight into to what it was like in your first couple of years. Um, expanding on that a bit, what was your, Troy, do you have any other... I guess rather than, you know, cruel training sessions, but do you have any, like, what was your best story you've had, um, your best moment at St Kilda? My best moment personally? Yeah. Oh, look, it was probably the goal I kicked really, I guess everyone talks about that. Um, but but I guess, yeah, my, 
the best moments I had, I think, were in the last year where I I started actually playing OK footy, and I think I played ten games in a row, and I finally felt like I I, I belonged and I was a part of the team, and and ever since. You know, ever since I started, I guess I felt like I was a, a bit player, and um, and I was in and out of the team. And you know, even Grant Thomas called me a month ago to talk about something, and I hadn't spoken to him for a long time. And his number came on my phone, and I got this cold chill that I used to get <laughs> that I used to get when he used to call me when I was 22, 23. And um, and I thought to myself, why am I getting a cold chill? He can't drop me. I don't play anymore. But uh, but usually the phone call was to drop me, and um, so. So yeah, I mean, yeah, best moments. I think it was at 06, the start of the 06 year, where I, I felt like I, I actually finally, yeah, you know, I finally felt like I was playing okay footy and I wasn't going to get dropped. And that was a really nice sort of three months, two or three months for me, where I, I just enjoyed it and I was playing my part. And um, and then I did a hamstring. And then I kept doing a, a hamstring, couldn't get it right, and I missed the rest of the year. But um, and then got sacked. So it was sort of that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. Yeah, there was a goal, which was fun, but um, but it was all the friendships as well. It was, yeah, we, we had some great times. And when you look back on the era I came through, um, yeah, we didn't have mobile phones. We could go out and drink. No one could take photos off us out. Um, we had mobile phones, but they were those brick things, and you used to play snake on them. You boys are too young to remember that. But uh, you, you certainly, there was no such thing as Instagram and Facebook, and yeah, these things um, were, yeah. We we could play and do our thing and and go out and have fun and but then Grant Thomas took us on a couple of trips that were just unbelievable and you go to the, going to London and training with Sebastian Coe and Daly Thompson and these guys was phenomenal um, and it was ahead of its time yeah you know, Grant was really ahead of his time he, he started um, community camps which we were the first club to go on a community camp and now every club goes on community camps and we were the first club that did an overseas trip as a pre season camp. And, you know, I, I guess most teams probably do that now. Um, we were in South Africa and had an amazing time over there. And, you know, when you're young and fit and just having fun, um, you know, and you, you're doing something you love, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'll probably look back on that with just that that sense of just, yeah, it, it was just a, a really good time. It just went really quick. You know, I, I remember Stewie Lowe, when I first got to the club, said, you know, just enjoy it because it goes past so quick. And and I spent eight years and I blinked and it was gone. Um, but but we had some great times. We you know we'd have lunches at Lindsay Fox's house. Um, yeah, we we had some, we went to China and did a training camp. And we were at the Australian consulate house in China having lunch, like having dinner and playing golf in all these different places around the world. And you know it was um it was pretty incredible really to look back on it. Um, but like I said, yeah, I wish. I wish from the playing side of it, I, I just wish I enjoyed it more from a sense of just not worrying so much about every mistake, meaning I was going to get dropped. Mm. Yeah, I think I think you touched on that really well because we interviewed Cozzy and Bakes a few weeks ago, um, and they they both said the same thing when when we asked them about GT and and some of their trips that they got to do, and they thought the experiences as eighteen to twenty four year old kids was was I don't know they couldn't get anything like it. Um, had they got into any other profession and they, they didn't thank GT enough for that. What was what was Tomo like for you? Um, obviously, you're on that sort of same age bracket as Cozzy and Bakes as they were going through the ranks. What was what was GT like for you as a coach? Yeah, Tomo was oh, – look, he, he was hard on me. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, I remember a game in Perth and I played and I'd cracked a rib in the first game and didn't realise it was cracked. And I think I had an X-ray and I reckon the doctor knew it was cracked and didn't tell me it was. So the second week we played in West Coast, and um, I can't think what year it was. It might have been, might have been oh three. Anyway, and we went to Perth and we got smashed. And I avoided contact with Daniel Chick. I think it was. You know, he was he was trying to shepherd me, and instead of me bracing for contact and taking the bump, I ran around him to try and keep chasing this bloke. And yeah, Tomo wasn't very happy with my performance, and um, he virtually said to me the next morning at training that I was getting the sack that year. And that I had, I had the rest of the year to prove to him that I needed to be on the list, and um, and that was round two, and I got dropped, and then you know, managed to fight my way back into the team, and, and managed to then stay on the list at the end of the year. But yeah, he was a hard man, um, no doubt about that. Like I said before, like he called me a month ago, and my, I got cold sweats from his phone number coming up on my phone. Um, but but by the end, 
you know, Grant, Grant and I had a good relationship. I got, I got on well with him and, you know, I, I think, I don't know whether I reminded him of himself or when he played, um, but certainly I wouldn't have ended up in Sorrento coaching if it wasn't for Grant Thomas because Grant got the sack famously at the end of 06 um, after we played in a prelim, prelim and then finals. And then he got the sack and, yeah, it's, it's, it, was, um, it was pretty amazing times. And then I got the sack not long after that. And um, Grant called me and said, what am I going to do? And then it, I ended up at Sorrento because Grant Thomas knew people in Sorrento that are looking for a coach and a player. Um, and I never I never really thought about coaching. I'd never thought about really life after footy. I was just involved in it and, and enjoying it. So, um, so I've got a lot to thank Grant for. Um, but, but, yeah, he was a hard coach. But, but what he did, he, he understood a, a group and he loved the group and he, he did he, – motivationally, he was a very good speaker. Um, he, got us, he got us up each week. He, we'd do random events and we'd do random things together. But he, he loved us as much as he loved his eight children. I guess at some point he must have had over 50 children because he had all of us as well. So we used to lob at his house and have dinners and – his poor wife would have to cook for eight children and then cook for an extra 50 blokes. It was, um, it was quite extraordinary. But he knew a time to have a beer with someone and put his arm around you, and he knew the time to give you a smack. Um, you know, I had a game at the SCG where I walked off, and I didn't think I played that badly, and we'd lost. And he hip and shoulder me in the, in the corridor underneath the SCG. And, um, yeah, it was, that's how he was. Um, he, he was big on effort. We knew, we knew what. We knew what was required each week. Everyone knew what the level of effort was. And um, he was very good at getting everyone up to a level so that whatever time the game started, we were, we were cherry ripe, ready to go. Yeah, it's, that's awesome to hear. Um, I guess the great coaches do have that great balance between uh, being the cuddly, friendly guy and then the, the one that can really put the foot down and, and drive the standards at the club. And it sounds like Tomo from everyone that we've interviewed is – was that guy, including himself, and he, I guess he was the first one we got to got to have a chat with from the past players and coaches. Yeah, well, he's you know he just said it's he set a standard, um, but he had a depth of relationship with players as well. Like he he knew a lot about what each player was going through, and um, and I think he could probably associate with a lot of the players because yeah, you know, he hadn't been a star himself, and um, so he knew sort of where majority of the list sat. But he knew what to do to get the most out of players. Like I remember him and him and Fraser Gehrig didn't get along, and they famously went and sat at the pub and apparently drank ten schooners and ended up, you know, walking out blind together. And they were in love with each other after that. So, you know, he, he knew he knew how to how to build a relationship with someone and how to and how to get someone on side. And with Fraser, it was pretty easy. Just drink beer with him. Sorry, Jordan, I'm, I'll let you take that. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, oh, I was just wondering, Troy, um, I heard Max has let you, well, he's told you to prepare a bit for trivia. Um, we've got a couple of questions to ask you about your career. <laughs> Have you prepared, done your homework at all? No, nah, mate, if it's about me, I'm, I'm probably not going to know, but um, I know how many games I played and um, beyond that, um, I, I couldn't tell you a lot of my stats. I know one thing: I'm not going to run out of um, I'm not going to run out of lead and a pencil by writing down the stats I had playing AFL footy. That's for sure. It wasn't. Uh, I didn't break any records. I might have broken the records for the most amount of time sat on a bench or, um, yeah, the, the greatest abusive sprays on a phone. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You can see if you you can stump me. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's important to keep in mind. You know, you've played more games. Um, of AFL than than Max or I or anyone else watching combined. So you know, I, I'm sure you, you know, you should hold yourself in in good stead, I suppose. Um, Troy, what was your most disposals in a game? Great question. Um, maybe did I hit twenty once? Yeah, you hit exactly yeah. twenty. Oh, there you go. Right, I must have had lots of kick ins and played onto myself. <laughs> A few handballs that you just wobble <laughs> yourself. <laughs> a couple of handball receives, yes. Um, there you go. Well, I got the first one right. Yeah. You're on a roll. Well, we're, uh, we, we've sort of structured them so they're a bit easier at the start and then they progressively get harder and 
into the more Jeez, that, obscure. Well, that one was bloody hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what was your total career goals? Was it twenty as well? Was twenty. That's there two for two so far. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, it's Jordan. Troy, what was your most goals in a game? Three, and they're all in a quarter against Port Adelaide. Wowie, he's he's on fire, Jordan. I thought yeah, you didn't know you your stats, Troy. There you go. Well, <laughs> on, my stats aren't that good, mate. I, you gotta you gotta hang on to them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, we, now we start getting into the more obscure ones. Yeah. Uh, what was your most amount of bounces in a game? I'm going to say four. <laughs> He's done his research, Jordan. He's done his research. <laughs> is it four? It yeah. Is. <laughs> He's done his research. All right. This one might stump you a bit, Troy. Who's the opponent you are undefeated against? Um, oh, that's a good question. I honestly have no idea. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at it and say someone like Richmond, maybe. Well, not quite, but it is a big Victorian club for a second chance. Is it Carlton? It's Carlton. Yeah, there you go. Well, they were pretty ordering in the early thousand in the early two thousand, so I probably should have guessed them, shouldn't I? I think they're pretty ordinary now, still. Still. <laughs> Yeah, well, if any of my mates are listening, I've got, I'm on a group chat with a few mates and there's a couple of Carlton supporters in there and they've they've told me that in confidence now they don't barrack for Carlton anymore, they barrack for the Melbourne Storm. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> so every time Carlton lose, my phone lights up with blokes just ripping into each other about Carlton's performance. But, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah at least it's not us. It's, uh, it's, well, that's it's... a good laugh. That's a good laugh. And, and, and look... We can raid them at the end of the year because Steve Silvani doesn't seem to like them that much. So um, he can go to go to town on their list and we'll get a couple of their good young players out of there. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully De Koning. De Koning, yep. That was um there's also another bloke, I think, running around their VFL midfield who's just been tearing it up. Um Paddy Dow. I reckon yeah, he's okay. the one that Silvani will have his fingers all over. Well, like, look, you know, who knows? It'll be interesting yeah, to see. But watch this space on that one. Will be very interesting. Um, Schwartz, you played in one draw in your career. Who was it against? And a bonus point if you can get the score right. Yeah, well, it was Sydney. Um, it was Sydney in, I reckon, 02 at the old okay. Telstra Dome. That's um, yep. the money. And the scores were like, it, we 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 loaded up in defence. We we had no, you know, we we weren't expected to do anything. We had we had a better team not playing than playing that night, and no one gave us a chance. And bloody Wolfie ran into an open goal, and hit the post. And um, and and that uh, that would have been an amazing win. Um, fifty five each maybe. Oh, fifty six all. Oh, <laughs> it must have been a spectacle to watch. <laughs> Yeah, oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure it would have been back. That was that one was pr- uh, before Jordan and I were born. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> we look, I know you boys do it. Now. We, well, we we um we loaded up. We wouldn't be allowed to do it now, but the only way we had a chance of winning that game was to just get extra numbers behind the ball, and that's yeah. what we did. We literally started extra numbers behind the ball, and I remember the whole week that was our whole mantra. Was just we're just going to load up behind, and we we should have won. It would have been <laughs> would have been one of the great wins because we we literally had all of our better players weren't playing basically, and um, oh, that would have been well. I still remember that it would have been a great. One. I think I kicked the first two goals of that game actually. So there you go. Oh, bit, bit fancy. It would have been funny to see after every time the uh, the centre bounce goes up, there would have been eight or ten St Kilda, St. Kilda players in the in the Sydney fourth line. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, the the six 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 rule definitely wasn't in then, and we were taking full advantage of it. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, awesome stuff. Um, we've got two more. Um, now equally as hard as each other, we think. What ground are you undefeated at? Um, I reckon Princess Park. 
you know how many games you played there? Two? One, but that is the correct answer. That is what we're <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you yeah, go. It was Princess Park. Yeah, he, yeah there you Jordan go. Has done his research. He's done his research. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed, Troy. I think, but even if you don't get this last one right, you're far and away. I think the best, um, is certainly better than, than, than Cozzy and Bakes. Well, if you had, if you had Bakes and Cozzy on, there's not too many <laughs> brain cells between those two, and, um, and if I can't beat them, I'm in real trouble. I mean. Yeah, Cosy used to run into things that weren't moving on grounds, and um, and Bakes just used to run into everything that moved. So, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm good mates with both of them, so I can give them a bit of curry. Uh, yeah, awesome. nice. Good to see that you're still mates with the with some of the old boys. But Troy, how many different grounds did you play on in your career? Um, I, I, I let's say eight. Oh, relatively close. It was 10. Yeah, okay. There you go. But, yeah, wow, you got what? I think we gave eight questions. That was seven of eight or seven of eight? I think something yeah. like that. Six of eight. It's by far and away the best we've had on the uh, on the show so far. Yeah, well, the other one is if, if you've had Milne on, Milne's as dumb as dog shit as well. So, <laughs> um, so I, I would beat him hands down. Um but uh, anyway, and if Melanie's listening out there, I love you, Melanie, but, um, but you're not that bright. <laughs> I think the only person that's beaten you was um, was uh, Joey Montagna, and he did that on the podcast. Um, I think he got every question right. Joey lives and breathes footy. He's a nerd. <laughs> that's, all he, that's all he does now is talk about footy. Every night I have to watch him on TV with David King and they're deciphering games. And he's a, he doesn't, he do, doesn't he do opposition analysis for an AFL club as well? I'm sure. I'm sure he does. I think he does. I think he does oppo analysis for a club, and and he, then he works on Fox Footy and he calls games. He lives and breathes footy. I reckon he goes to sleep calling games of footy. <laughs> but, um, no, I love him as well. He's a good man. So yeah, caught up with them all at the Hall of Fame night, and yeah, really, really good mates, and and we've got really good bonds from a yeah from a time we all we all had fun together. Oh, it's awesome. Um. Shorts, if it's okay with you, we um we'll like to go into some fan questions. Some of the fans are eager to get, eager to ask some of the bit of a Q and A, I guess. Um, yep. We'll kick it off with uh with Beth. She wants to know what the best spray you can quote is. Oh, I probably can't quote it. Um, <laughs> can you give us a PG thirteen version of it, Troy? Um, oh, who who gave the best sprays? I mean, Grant Grant obviously gave the best sprays. He, he was um he was pretty brutal. Um, Grant was pretty famous for saying things like, um, yeah, don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. Um, he used to say one that my dad used to say, and I still don't understand it. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, sure, sort, of, sort of. Sort of. Um, well, he used to say, um, what, it's as easy as shitting in bed and kicking it out with your feet. <laughs> now, I still don't understand what that means. And, and my dad used to say it growing up, and I'm like, I don't get what that means. And then Grant Thomas started rolling out with it. I'm like, what does that actually mean? But uh, look, best sprays. I mean, Malcolm Blight gave me a spray one day at the MCG. I still don't know why. And um, I, I was holding the phone, like, literally out here, and you could hear him just going berserk. And he was just swearing down the line. And anyway, I, I don't know what that was about. But um, that's a couple of quotes, I guess, that Tom I used to use. Um, in terms of actual sprays, I Oh look, he gave a couple of good ones to a couple of blokes, and you know, said they'll never ever play again. And um, yeah, he, he was he was pretty brutal, um, and he, he knew that when he eyeballed you, it was um, it was trouble. And sometimes he'd get an itch from your face eyeballing you, and then you knew you were in a, you were in more trouble then as well. So um, yeah, no, he he gave a couple of good ones. Oh, it's yeah. very funny. <laughs> That's a nice response, Troy. Beth's also <laughs> wondering if you've um you passed on some of your genetic well, passed on the hair gene to your your kids. She she loved your hair from back in the day. Oh, look, they've all got thick hair. That's for sure. So yeah, my daughter's got you know thick curly hair, and um my sons have yeah they've all got yeah they're, they're not going to go bald bald. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that <laughs> sounds good. Um, rebuilt. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. 
Uh, what was your favourite teammate, Troy? Oh, probably Bakes. Um, yeah, Bakes and I had a lot of fun together. We we um yeah, we just had so many laughs, and I used to pick Bakes up for games a lot. Um, mainly because he didn't know how to drive to games and didn't know where the grounds were. Um, didn't know, didn't know how to get to the airport. Um, he'd get to his house and he'd roll out of bed, and I would have I would have prepared and you know had eaten well the night before and slept and. I've done everything. I'm stretching. I'm, you know, breakfast was right. All my fluid intakes right the morning of the game. I'd roll to his place to pick him up. He'd get out of bed, get an apple, and get in the car, and then and then proceed to go out and just annihilate whoever he played. So he was he was far and away my favourite um, teammate, and and the way he played was, you know, just phenomenal. And um, he's such a generous person, and a you know, just an awesome teammate. But he was the bloke first picked every single week, and he did some things on a footy field that, whilst he he probably you know, crossed the line a few times with a few of his things he did, he um he he certainly put his body on the line more than anyone else I ever saw. Yeah, I think I think you're spot on with that. He um he was the ultimate bodyguard. I think I called him that when we interviewed him about a month ago now. Um, and he he had no regrets for what he did on the uh, on the footy field because it was in the best interest of of what his role was. So I think that could only be admired at Saints Footy. No, and off the field too. I've seen him do some things that <laughs> probably we shouldn't talk about here. But um, yeah, he he was certainly um, he was a very very funny, hilarious guy, and um, yeah, did some things that yeah probably shouldn't be discussed. But um, but nothing too bad, but just more stuff to himself. And, um, yeah, just hilarious. But yeah, he's still still one of my best mates and, yeah, we catch up pretty regularly in his um, – but he was – yeah, he, he was a, a favourite. Yeah, nice. Troy, Sean's wanting to know who the worst roommate was on away trips. Um, Aussie Jones was the worst one um, that I, I didn't like rooming with. Um and who else was bad? Yeah, Milne was bad. Uh, Milne was just a pest. He just wouldn't sleep and always up to practical jokes and hiding your stuff or stealing your stuff or jumping out of closets and thinking it was funny to, you know, make you laugh and scare you. And, yeah, you know, we, we used to go around to each other's homes and we'd scare each other and take light bulbs out and then throw things at the front door and, you know, turn the power off on the house so all the power went out and, um, and he was right up to that, but he was, um, yeah, he, he was he was pretty bad to room with as well. Uh, Xavier wants to know if uh, Stewie has invited you down to his new house in Sorrento. I'm guessing he's talking about Stewie Lowe here. Yeah, well, I don't know if Stewie. I know that Stewie's working on a house down here. I've seen him a few times at a local coffee shop in the mornings. He still looks as fit as when he played, um, and. Yeah, but I don't know. I, he, he might have a house down here, but if he does, I haven't been invited. So, Stewie, mate, invite me around for a beer. <laughs> yeah, Troy, uh, Simon's wondering if you still occasionally go to watch Saints games in person. I actually went to like – I went to three games early in the year. I haven't been for a, a month or so. Oh, I would have been longer than that. I've – but I went to one of yeah, the first three games I think I went to, which was unbelievable. I hadn't been to three games in three years. So, yeah, I still go. I um, still enjoy it. Went to the Hall of Fame night, and that was a that was a good night. Boys played well against Essendon. And um, a couple of mates got inducted into the Hall of Fame. So uh, we had a few beers that night, which was good fun. Lovely. Um <laughs> Francis wants to know if you had a booster seat for uh, for Stevie Baker when you were picking him up or maybe you had the mirror in the uh, passenger side for him for being a passenger princess. Well, yeah. <laughs> Milne needed the booster more than Bakes. Bakes, uh, <laughs> Bakes used to tell me he was a good size, um, but Milne was a midget. Um, well, small. Um, so, yeah, uh, Bakes, oh, look, it was hilarious going to a game with him. He was... Uh, yeah, completely just away with the fairies, and but clearly getting ready for a role. Um, but the way he went about it was just he was so relaxed and just having fun and laughing, and 
Um, but no, I didn't need a booster seat for him. But um, I'm sure if he's listening, he'd be having a chuckle at that. Troy, Johnny's Johnny's mentioned that um, you're apparently an elite cricketer. Johnny Webster is one of my best mates. So the fact that he's actually listening is a fair bit of respect to that. Um, <laughs> we we grew up together, and yeah, I was a pretty good cricketer. I think um, Johnny's dad used to say that if I didn't play AFL, I would have played cricket at a high level. Um, and yeah, I was playing pretty high level cricket at, at one point, but then footy footy came along and, and took over, and it. It was sort of unexpected because I, I actually thought that I was – if I was going to make it in a sport, I actually thought it might have been cricket. Now, cricket's harder to make it in because there's less, there's less opportunities with cricket. But um, but to what level I could have played, well, who knows? I'll, I'll never know. But um, but I got I played district thirds for St Kilda. Um, I would have played seconds there, but I'm, I pretty much moved to Sorrento. Um, and I captained their Dowling team, which was under 16s. Um, and then went on and played like under seventeen Vic. So yeah, maybe I don't know. Who knows? I, the problem was with cricket. It was um, I was bowling the same pace as I was when I was eleven, when I was sixteen. So I didn't really get that much quicker. But I think I could bat. But thank you for Johnny for getting on and having a listen. And um, we need to catch up, Johnny. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like who is it? Alex Carey in the uh, in the current Australian cricket team. He played few games at GWS or in the in the reserves, you might have might have been able to switch to that maybe after 06 or 07. No, no, I, I'm not going to say that I would have played any higher than maybe <laughs> district district seconds, but um, but who knows? I mean, if, if you just don't know, do you? But um, but I enjoyed cricket, and um, probably I probably enjoyed it more than footy. It was just that footy took over. Yeah, exactly right. I guess I guess once you get to an age, you just have to pick a sport and you got to sort of stick with it, especially if you're playing at a higher level, don't you? Yeah, it was sort of picked for me because when you get drafted, you're not expecting it. Um, you put your name in the draft, but when you get drafted 53 or whatever I was, you know, it's it can go either way. You can either not get drafted or get drafted. Um, it's not like I was a top 10 pick. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just one of those things. I don't, I don't regret playing footy, but I'd probably regret not knowing how good I could have been at cricket. Yeah. Um, we'll only go maybe a couple more, Jordan, maybe one eight, one more each. Um, Kendall wants to know uh, who your favourite assistant coach was, maybe maybe the person that sort of cuddled you up a bit after uh, after you were given a spray. Uh, Jason Cripps at one point was an assistant coach, I think, because um, he – and we were good mates when we were playing, so he was probably one that – Spent a bit of time with me. Um, Matty Rendell was good. Um, he, he was you know, tactically a very good assistant coach, so I enjoyed him and his company. Oh, so, so that's a couple of people. Terry Danaher, I ended up, when I was coaching Sorrento, his son-in-law um, was our captain. So sort of small world that Terry's daughter married the captain at Sorrento. And he was, yeah, so I used to see Terry a bit. He was quite funny. Um, he'd, he'd get into us as, as young lads. But, um, yeah, so... Any one of those few guys, but um, maybe maybe TD was good. He, he always tried to get you to train better and you know, go harder, son, and get get your hands right, son. And um, he'd always be he'd always be trying to get you up and uh, and uh, yeah, get you doing extra work. Yeah, nice. Um, might throw to the the last one, last well, fan fan comment. It's not so much of a, a question as it is a comment. But Kieran's just recalling the time that that he met you and. And your misses at a Frankston Vodafone. Ah, uh, Jesus! There you go. Um, <laughs> right. Well, um, you know what? look, yeah, I, I probably, I, I don't really remember it, but thank you for being kind. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I think I'm always pretty level headed and and try not to act like I'm better than anyone. I'm not really better than anyone, to be honest. I'm well, it's just an average footballer who. Um, who, yeah, did that for a little while, and I'm, I'm probably um, prouder of the things I did away from footy. You know, once I um, once I got the sack, but I uh, yeah, I just, I just happened to play a few games for the Saints, which was good fun, and I wouldn't change it. Oh, that's awesome, Troy. Um, well, I guess we'll, that that will sort of wrap up the night. So, thank you very much for joining us um, on the show, and we hope you you've had a bit of fun reminiscing back in your playing days and. Good always to talk a bit about Saints footy. Um, I think what 
<laughs> to me, well, sorry, what Jordan and I were most impressed was maybe your trivia knowledge. That, uh, well, that, yeah, I, as I said, mate, look, when you haven't done much, it's, it's pretty <laughs> easy to remember. Like, you know, 20 disposals in a game isn't that, uh, it's not earth shattering. And um, it's not like I'm a Lenny Hayes where you're asking him how many tackles he had or how many clearances he had where the numbers would be out of, you know, off the chart. So, um, yeah, when, you, when you're just an average battler, it's pretty easy to remember that, um, that the games where you actually played okay. Awesome. Uh, Jordan, you got anything anything else to add before we let Troy go? Uh, Troy, just one final question. Um, you know, for any... Any, any, um, you know, pe- uh, well, underage footballers that are, you know, going through the draft, um, you know, maybe on the fringes of selection, you know, whether they get drafted or not, like yourself, is there any, you know, advice that you'd give them? Um, yeah, I, I think you, the, the one thing I'd say is just, just enjoy it. The other thing I'd say is um, if you're young and you get drafted and you're not quite playing senior football, you, you've pretty much got to harass the coach. And, and find out what you need to do to try and get games um, and, and just continually ask questions and try, and try and attach yourself to a couple of blokes that train really well and seem to do that consistently well. Um, but, but, yeah, that's, that's a couple of things. I mean, just give your best every time. It goes without saying. But, but I think ask questions of the coach. And, you know, if you ask questions of the coach, then the coach will give you feedback on how you're going. And... Um, and, and if you can improve in areas that they're telling you to improve, you're a chance to get games. So, um, but yeah, and then the other thing is, you know, your career goes so quick. Just enjoy it. I mean, look at what Collingwood are doing now. They're virtually they're virtually laughing running up the race to play a game of AFL footy. Which, um, yeah, to think that to think that that's where the game's gone from when we played. And we weren't allowed to smile after we won a Wizard Cup. Um, so, so these blokes are laughing pre-game and after game and during the game, which is. I think it's great. I think it's a good message for everyone that it's it's a game and have some fun with it. Yeah, nice. No, it's, no, it's definitely a good message to take away. Um, you know, I think a lot of people can get caught up in in football, but it's a good reminder that it's just a game. Um, yeah, good message. Thanks, Troy. Um, no not just for the message, but thanks for your time today. Um, killed it at trivia, and yeah, thanks for spending time with us and answering a couple of questions from the fans. No worries, guys. Have a good night. Pleasure to come yes. on. You too, mate. Take care. There you go. Well, wasn't that a bit of a treat, as we always say, Jordan? Um, oh, that was, yeah, but that was that was exceptional. I thought he gave you know some good stories and really really detailed answers. Gave us a good insight into you know life at St Kilda back in the day. Yeah, exactly right. I um, know oh, it's always it's also sorry it's always also nice to hear from. Uh, from not just the legends of the club, there is a lot more than just the stars that played out throughout the 2000s and early 2010s. And it was um, maybe one of the unsung heroes of, of 2006 on, and round six, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, round, round six, 2004. Ah, for 2004, I'm getting the six wrong. But, yeah, no, it was, um, yeah, hopefully, saying as you, you enjoyed that. And, um, yeah, I was quite I was quite happy with, with a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the stuff that Troy was saying. And... Yeah, um, yeah, great insight. Yeah, nice. No, I just can't believe he got. Well, he was he was sort of right in saying that you know, probably compared to someone like Lenny Hayes, it was probably easier to get in trivia. But there were a lot of questions in there that were a fair bit tricky, and he still still did quite well. Um, yeah, well, um, obviously we don't have a game this weekend. Um, you know, we've got the game in Sydney. In, in two weeks' time at the SCG. Thursday night footy is back, finally. Um, yeah, I mean, the way we're playing, we'd be lucky to beat the bye this week, but, you know, hopefully we can get that done. Um, yeah, so no no, no preview, I guess. No last 15, 10, 15 minutes from us at this stage. Um, yeah. So, um, um, Sorry, Jordan, I think you've just lied to everyone. There's no Friday night footy back this week. Oh, I said... For, uh, Thursday night footy is back. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, thurs, Thursday night footy. I don't think. Oh, that's but me. I was talking about in two weeks' time. Ah, oh, shit! You're right. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure why you were correcting them in there, Max. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, Thursday night footy, Max is back in two weeks' time. Um, you know, I'm sure it's 
I'm sure most of you would agree that, um, you know, it's good to have Thursday night footy back, um, you know, whether it's at Marvel or anywhere, it's just good for footy, even if St Kilda's not playing. Um, you know, obviously good that we are. We're the first Thursday night game back. Um, to end it as we always do, um, Max, who, uh, how do we end it? Oh, my Lord. We, well, we usually go into a, a word for how you feel it into into the next week. And you know what? I'm I'm going to say going into next week, I'm feeling quite relaxed. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with the word break. Not just in terms of us of St Kilda having a break, but also I reckon the fans having a break from what we had to endure on on Saturday. Sainers, let you know, let us know what your your word for the. The, the upcoming week is, or maybe even up, upcoming in, in two weeks. Um, Mr. DJ Rude Boy is back and he's asking Max halfway mark of the season, yeah. one word. I'm going to say content. I'm pretty content with, you know, if you said to us we're seven and four at the start of the year, I'd take that. But yeah, probably could have been a bit higher, but you know, not the end of the world. So I'll go with content. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm very similar. I'm pretty happy with, with seven. Mm, sorry. I'm pretty happy with seven and four. I remember we did this first one of our first shows was um someone someone texted in sorry texted in commented in and and asked what would would you be ha- what record would you be happy with after going uh, after the first six rounds and I think we both said two and four or three and three so to now get to seven and four we have really expect uh, exceeded expectation despite how we've been playing. Um, we should have beat the Hawks or, or maybe won a game or lost a game against Port or, or Collingwood. But, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how we're going so far and I'm really excited to see what Ross does now moving into the second half of the season. Um, he said, sorry, the Troy said it's about now building consistency and I think he's absolutely right. We've built consistency. We've shown teams that we can start off a season strong um, after the first 11 games. It's now about closing it out, making sure we solidify ourselves in finals. So, yeah, what, what about you, Jordan? Sorry, I didn't ask you. Uh, and the one word for um, how our season's gone. Oh, no, you did answer that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all over the shop at the moment. Max is a bit away with the fairies tonight. Um, <laughs> guys, guys, relieved. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is more so in terms of uh, for, the, for the upcoming week uh, rather than, than um, the – Half the season that's gone. I'm not sure, Beth, whether this is in response to um the season that's gone or the um the the upcoming game. Uh, but I probably works either way. I think there's some things that you know circumspect works in terms of there's some things we can improve on. Um, you know, in the upcoming weeks, but also yeah, something that we can improve on. Mr. DJ Rude Boy is surprised how we've gone. Um. And I think Guy liked your comment about winning the buy rounds, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, well, you never know what happens when you know when when you play the buy. I'm not sure if any of you have seen that video on YouTube about um, Port Adelaide losing to the buy by one point, but it's definitely worth a watch. I definitely recommend that we um, you know, you check that out after the video. It's definitely a good laugh, a couple of minutes. Um, Scoreline prediction for two weeks might be a bit a bit difficult from here, but Max, do you want to give it a go anyway? No, I want to save it for net, for for the two in sorry our show in two weeks time. Um, give us something a bit more to talk about. Yeah, fair enough. We do need we do need the content, you know. Given we're the Tuesday night show and we don't get the luxury of doing straight after the game like the the Monday night boys do. Um, yeah, so um, pl- well, I guess do it anyway. Play to have a big game. Player to have a big game at the SCG two weeks from Thursday. Um, can see Higo going big. He's um, he's had a close one before at the SCG. Missy Higgins, we all know about that. I reckon he'll really turn the narrative on its head, and and he might kick six goals this this time around against Sydney. And I reckon Ross is going to light a fire under some of those senior players' bellies. Um. As Troy said, if you if you're not playing AFL level footy this time of the year or, or close to after the buy round, then you're probably in a bit of strife at the end of the season. So I reckon someone like Higgins, maybe Billings comes back into the side and has a ripping game, but right now it's Billings to have a massive one. Sorry, sorry, Higgins to have a missing one. 
Oh, I'm missing one. Oh my yes. god. No, move, move, move on from me. What it's do you not think? Max's night tonight, but um, I'm going to say the plate of a big week. Uh, well, a big game that week will be Jack Steele. Um, said a few comments about it tonight. Um, you know, been a bit flown under the radar recently with probably underperforming a little bit, still recovering from that collarbone. Um, but yeah, it'd be good to see him find some form against against the Swannies. Um. Yeah, we might just might almost wrap it up there, Sainers. Yeah, we I think we will. Just one last comment I've seen. I saw it earlier in the show, but I want to address it now. Jordan, hopefully that gives you a bit of a smile on your face. Aviva says, go Jordan and Max. So thank you guys oh, thank for you. your support. Thank you, Aviva. Um, yeah, that is, this is the first time we're doing the live stream sort of show or any sort of media content at all. So what we've got through 11 weeks of footy, and I think we did two shows in the lead up to the uh, – to the to what is it the AFL season? So for us ourselves, we're at the halfway point, and um, I think it's a bit of a TBD whether we're doing the show next week, Jordan. We might have a bit of a buy round ourselves with exams coming up. I think that yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, not TBD at this stage, Sainers, but we'll, yeah. we'll keep you updated. Yeah, um, but yeah, hopefully everyone's been enjoying the content so far, and I think that's if we were to do a show next week, it might just be a bit of reflection and. Um, hopefully get a few of you guys on, a bit of fan cams or, or why not, So or whatnot, sorry. So, yeah, hopefully everyone's been enjoying Saints TV Live um, along with the Saints TV podcast, the, the, weekly, the weekly show and the previews, the fan cams that Marshy does. I don't know. There's a lot of Saints, Saints content that's been going on this year and we hope that everyone's been, uh, been enjoying it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, like Max said, this is our first time doing anything media related. I don't think if you asked us this time last year if we'd be on Saints TV, we would have gone what? Um, so yeah, bit, bit surreal. Yeah, still a bit surreal. We love doing it. We love you guys. Um, but as always, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night and have a great week. Go the Saints. See you guys next time.